بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم My brothers and sisters, if you had one dua, you had one supplication, one wish that Allah guaranteed to answer, what would you ask for? What would you give that dua to? Would it be for the highest parts of Jannah? Would it be to see a loved one again? Would it be for more wealth in this dunya? Allah tells us, and the Prophet ﷺ tells us that there are certain people from Allah's creation, the prophets and messengers, that Allah has given many du'as that He has guaranteed they will be accepted. But every prophet and messenger had one special unique du'a that is guaranteed acceptance by Allah. And if you look at the love and the concern the Prophet ﷺ had for this ummah, he says every prophet and every messenger use their, du use their dua in their lifetimes, except for me. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have saved my dua for my ummah, Yom al Qiyamah. I have not used it for myself, for my loved ones, for my family, to attain a higher part in Jannah, for anything in this dunya. I have saved it for my loved ones and for my ummah in the most difficult and most hardest time they are ever going to face, which is Yom Al-Qiyamah. That day where the mother will leave her children, the closest friends will disregard of one another, showing us the love and the concern the Prophet ﷺ had for every single one of us. One day the Prophet ﷺ, he is walking with his Sahaba and he is contemplating over the Qur'an and he remembers the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which was in the past, where Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, those that follow me, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ minni. The ones who follow me, then they are my people. They are the ones that are from me. Meaning that he frees himself from everybody else that does not follow him. Then the Prophet ﷺ remembers the dua of Isa a.s. in the future, Yom Al-Qiyamah, where he's going to say, into أَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ibaduk. O Allah, if you punish them, then they are your servants and you are free to do as you please. And if you have mercy upon them, then you are free to do as you please also. Meaning he frees himself from those that do not follow him. When the Prophet ﷺ reflected over these ayat, he stopped and he raised his hands to the sky. فَرَفَعَ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَقَالَ اللَّهُمَّ أُمَّتِي أُمَّتِي فَبَكَى he said, oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. And he began to cry. He began to shed tears for every single one of us. Every single one in his ummah. And you find this has a very special connection to the month of Ramadan. Because if it wasn't for the Prophet wasallam and his sunnah and his guidance and his sacrifice in teaching us this deen, there would be no Ramadan. In fact, there would be no Jannah for us to attain. Because we can only enter paradise through the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. The only way for us to enter into Jannah is by following his guidance. Especially you young brothers and young sisters here on this evening, you have to understand, you are being tested and tried in ways that maybe your parents can't even imagine. The tricks and the plots the shaitan has created for you now to enter into the fire of hell are not like any other generation has seen. However, you have a responsibility to learn the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, to learn his guidance, to learn his etiquette, his mannerisms, because that day is what saves us from any test and any trial. As Imam Malik, he said, a sunnah ka safinati nuh. The sunnah, it is like the ark of Noah. Whoever embarks upon that ark, he will be saved. And whoever does not, then he will be drowned. So regardless of what situation we are going through, what difficulty or hardship we are facing, what test or trial we are going through, there's example and there's guidance in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam that is there for every single one of us to take heed. Whether you're a father, a husband, a child, whatever situation you're going through, there is guidance in the sunnah for us to learn and to better ourselves. The only way for us to enter into Jannah is by following the Prophet's guidance. 
in how we speak, how we carry ourselves, our character, our mannerisms, our behavior, how we process life, how we go to the different stages and signposts of life, how we get to Allah, how we process our religion. One of the hadith, and I end with this, that's pertinent to the month of Ramadan, is the hadith of the three steps the Prophet ﷺ took when Angel Jibreel came and said, say, Ameen, where the best of creation and the best of mankind are making dua for our well-being. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ameen, to all three duas. The first one was the one that sees Ramadan and does not attain Allah's forgiveness because it's so easy to do so, then he deserves to be distant from Allah's mercy because he chose to turn away. The one that sees his parents, one or both of them, and they are in an old age, and he has the opportunity to be at their side and serve them, and he does not do so, then he too deserves to be distant. And the third one is the one that hears the Prophet's name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and does not send peace and blessings upon him, then he too deserves to be distant. If the one that doesn't say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, is distant, from his mercy, from Allah's mercy, then what about the one that disregards of the Prophet Sunnah in every way of life? When he speaks whilst he's fasting, he does not reflect the Sunnah. The way he carries himself, his mannerisms, his character, his behavior, the areas that we come from, the cleanliness of the masjid, the crime rates of our areas. We have a huge responsibility to rectify ourselves and rectify our society and our community also. And if we can't do the basics, then how do we expect Allah is going to give us victory when the Muslims are suffering across the world? If we can't keep the masjid clean, we can't keep our areas clean, you think Allah is going to set Gaza free at your hands? May Allah ease the affairs of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka Hamid majid.